um, difficulty in, in, in that was that it was easily detected by doing MD5 timestamp uh, hash, hashes on the actual binaries against known good media. So that would detect that your binaries were tampered with, and that would be a telltale sign that something was wrong. So a kernel rootkit um, doesn't replace your system binaries. So if you do your MD5 hash against all your system binaries, they all appear the same. What it does is subvert the kernel. Um, therefore, it, it's more difficult to detect it. So how do we redirect system calls? Um, we redirect system calls by uh, creating a, a hook. And what that, in essence, is, is um, when the system calls a specific system call, we intercept that and call our own code and then redirect it back. So by doing that, we place ourselves kind of like a man-in-the-middle attack for the system call. Um, within that man-in-the-middle, uh, within that middle, is our code, our exploit code, which performs the functions we want it to do. So by hijacking the kernel, we are no, not only subvert the layers above the kernel, but we also subvert the end user himself. While developing this rootkit, there were a few hurdles to overcome. Uh, it, was, it wasn't as straightforward as it would have been on a usual commodity PC, Linux PC. Um, one of the hurdles, uh, which, which exists also on commodity PCs, is to retrieve the system call address. Um, another hurdle was um, to how do we compile the actual module against the, the source code for the device. And another hurdle which uh, we had to overcome was to enable system call debugging which would allow us to um, determine higher layer phone functions, which would, we would then be able to tap into and hijack and uh, perform actions that we want to perform. So in kernels great, um, greater than 2.5, there is a certain memory address called the system call table structure. Uh, which is no longer exported. They did that for security reasons primarily, as uh, in kernels 2.4 and below. Um, this was exported uh, by, this, by the kernel, and it allowed lots of rootkits to um, use this functionality to, use, to get the address of syscall table and then hijack the system calls. Um, recently, around 2006, if I'm not mistaken, um, there was a FRAC article by a guy called SD and another guy called Sevic, I believe, and that was called um, how to, how to um, s obtaining syscall addresses without. Um, he, it, he basically used dev kmem to obtain the syscall table address uh, using certain heuristics. Um, because all Android devices ship with the same hardware, firmware, and kernel. This is not really necessary in our case. So unless a user has actually flashed their device or rooted their device, which most users haven't, um, you can simply obtain the syscall table address from the system.map file of the compiled kernel. Um, this also means that you can obtain lots and lots of targets for different devices, and you can create an installation script which, depending on the uname of the actual uh, device, it loads the specific syscall table address for that specific device. <coughs> we obtained um, target addresses for the HTC legend, for the HTC desire, and for the actual emulator itself. Another hurdle we had to overcome was to um, load our, our kernel module within the actual running kernel. It, it was quite weird because the HTC, HTC legend, HTC rather, they provided the kernel source code for the legend. And you would expect that if you compile a kernel module against it, it would actually allow you to load it onto the device itself. This wasn't the case uh, because the uname of the actual HTC legend uh, was extended by um, saying instead of 2.6.29, which is the actual default kernel provided by HTC, they, the uname said it was 2.6.29, 9A30, 26A7. So when you try to load your kernel, your module into the, uh, into the legend's kernel, 
um, it's uh, the Ver Magic Stone match, and it wouldn't allow you to do that. So we looked into the source code of the actual uh, HTC Legend kernel um, and modified that, and then re recompiled uh, the module against it, and it allowed us to run to load the module successfully. The file that we modified to load that was the a file called utsrelease.h. So. At this point, we had successfully loaded our module into the HTC Legends kernel. Um, what we next needed to do was to understand which higher layer phone functions we needed, we needed to intercept. Now, all Google Android has thousands, hundreds, thousands of APIs. These all, in the end, interface with a set of 255 to 300 system calls. So the main ones which we were we targeted were the syswrite, sysread, and sysopen, sys, and sysclose system calls. And these are the system calls, these are the functions within the kernel which um, perform all the read, write, open, and close uh, operations. So by determining the arguments that are passed to these system calls, we can find specific events that we want to hijack. So having created this um, syscall debugging uh, script, um, LKM, which is also available on the DEF CON CD, um, it allowed us to print all these system call and their arguments. And this was all found in dmessage. dmessage is basically um, log, a log file which um, shows you all the print k's that we we would show we would send into the that were coming from the kernel with the arguments of those system calls so what we tr what we went on to do was we sent sms messages to the phone we called it and we trapped these events um, we then determined that certain events uh, we can hijack them and proceeded to hijack them to create our rootkit so here's the here's the rootkit itself. So we're, this is a, a tool called um, MindTrick. Um, it's an Android rootkit, and, and basically you know, we'll explain what it does today, and then we're going to demo it for you. So it allows us to send an attacker a reverse shell over 3G or Wi-Fi. And so basically, um, once the rootkit is loaded on a phone, if if it's if it's if the phone number is defined um, before the of course before the global kernel module is compiled, when it receives a phone number or phone call from that specific phone number, it'll then open up a reverse shell to an IP address that's specified in there as well. So it's basically a trigger. Um, I mean, you could we, you could define multiple phone numbers, you can define multiple places. Um, you know, it's really you know it's C code, so you, you can extend this to it however you want. Um, and then basically, once that happens, the attacker has has root access on the phone, and it's 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 a it's a 3G connection or a Wi-Fi connection, whatever it may be, um, across the internet, wherever you're you're located, and you can you can do whatever you want on that on the user's phone. The user may be on the phone talking, and you're on the person's on that person's phone. Also, the rootkit is hidden from the kernel itself, and so we, we included that um, in in the functionality. And so when you load the kernel, uh, when you load the the rootkit, um, and you look you do ls mod. It doesn't show up. So the source for that is on the DEFCON CD, um, so that you can, if, you, if you're interested, you can, you can play around with it. So now we get to the live demo. Um, and so you know, we, 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 I guess we pray to the demo gods that, that this goes well. We are using a lot of um, wireless technology um, in here, which is always a sort of a curse at, at DEFCON. So, um, so but, but this is what we're going to do. And so I'll sort of list these, and then we'll go to the demo, and, and we'll walk you through them. But basically, we're going to show you how we install the rootkit on the phone. Um, basically, we'll activate the rootkit via phone call, and so we'll, we'll show that. And then you'll see reverse shell open up. And then we'll go through, and, and Krishna will, will basically show you some ex exploration there um, in finding where the SMS messages are, viewing the person's contacts, and, um, and then basically looking up the GPS coordinates as well um, on, on the phone. And then we'll attempt um, to make a phantom phone call. Um, but unfortunately, when we were in the, the speaker ready room, we realized that um, if he calls my phone, um, and he types those commands in on the screen, you're going to see my phone number um, on the screen. And so I'm not sure I really want that. So um, we may disconnect the screen and, and, and run that for you so you can actually see the, um, the, the rootkit calling my phone and making a phantom phone call. Let's jump out. Yep.
So we are connected to the phone right now uh, using what is called the Android, Android debug bridge. And what that is is just an interface which allows you to upload files, download files, um, and get a shell on the actual phone. Uh, this is just, just to allow us to install the rootkit. Um, this isn't an attack vector. This is default functionality provided by Android. So here's the here's the rootkit itself. So you see mindtrick.ko and so. I believe I've already installed the uh, rootkit on the phone. You did. Okay. Yeah, I already installed it. So um, I've already installed the rootkit. Just getting to in, just getting ready for the talk. However, how you would install it is just type install mindtrick.ko, and that would load the rootkit into the actual uh, device. Um, we can see with LSMod that. The two modules that are currently loaded um, are the dub, uh, are the wireless modules for the actual phone. Nothing there denotes anything related to mind trick. So now we will disconnect from the phone and set up a netcat listener. Okay, so now I'm going to attempt to call his phone. And if it works, you should see a shell. Fingers crossed. Gods hate us. <laughs> hmm. I'll just reboot it. Okay, so while we're rebooting the phone, anybody have a good joke? <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you when you decide to do a run through it in the speaker's ready room. <laughs> Was that a yes back there? Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess a little bit more about the setup here. So basically, um, we we have a Wi-Fi access point, and hopefully that's not the, the reason why that's that's going on. So basically, the phone is on the 3G network, um, Christian's phone. Um, it has the loadable kernel module or when, when it comes up, it should have it loaded on it. Um, and then, basically, when I place a phone call, it should open up a reverse shell. So let's wait a couple minutes. Good thing we have... We, we're fine on time, so... Should I check the Wi-Fi? Can you ping? Yeah, the Wi-Fi should work. Can you ping my... No, yeah. You're trapping the phone, right? Yeah. Fit seven? Mm -hmm. The phone is up. Okay, so, so let's, let's try again. We're connected again to the phone. We'll insmod the rootkit. LS mod shows it's not there. We will now try to disconnect and try again. There we go. There we go. Um, one thing to note is that I have no missed call logs here. Um, I also, um, the phone didn't ring, the volume is up. So that's a functionality provided as well. Yeah, so we're, we're now on the phone. We're